hello! Today we are doing my mid-month check-in where we talk about what I have read, what I'm currently reading, and what I might read next. And yeah, we've gotten through, got through a good number of books so far. Let's see here. I want to say like 10 or so. I feel like I've been DNFing a lot of things. Like I have been trying to go through my backlog of Kindle freebies that I have accumulated over the last 10 years and some mass market paperbacks and uh, it's causing me to DNF quite a few of them. It feels like my number of books to talk to you about would be higher if I had not just been reading like 50 pages of a bunch of things that I then don't really have anything meaningful to say about. But you know, such is the life of a reader slash a DNFer slash this is basically my free book hoarding ways coming back, you know, I'm like paying the piper now with having to sort through all of those books that I accumulated back in the day. Do you think I've gotten a lot better at not just getting a book because it's free. I, I think I'm better at having an actual plan for reading that book. I have managed to finish a good number of books, like 10 or so, and there's a few that I will not talk about today because I'm gonna talk about them at the end of the month. That includes Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang, Marple, 12 New Mysteries by various authors, and I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I just finished that on audio, which I do recommend because she reads it and is good. So we'll talk more about those at the end of the month. Things that I can go ahead and give you my thoughts on. So two that I don't have in physical form. Both of these are advanced reader copies, so they are not out yet, but they will be soon. And uh, yeah, I don't have them in physical form. So so first I have Well Traveled, yeah, Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca, which is the fourth book in her sort of Ren Fair adjacent contemporary romance series. I do continue to really enjoy these books. I will say my critique of this is pretty much the same critique I've had of the last three books, all of them except for the first one, which is I like these books. I don't know that the romances are totally selling me on them. I'm not totally persuaded by the romances. There always seems to me to be something kind of missing in terms of, I don't know if it's the chemistry or the transition into the relationship. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I don't know. I'm just not totally sold. So, but I like the book other than that. Like I like the writing, I like the characters, even the plot and like the character journey of the main character is good, but they read more like women's fiction than romances, which is fine. But I just wish that's how, I guess maybe I just need to start resetting my expectation for that to be the case for these books. So this one is the cousin of Mitch, who was the hero in the last book. She is sort of like high-flying Boston attorney who her firm is basically just stringing her along. They're never going to actually make her a partner, but she keeps like being the grunt and kind of, you know, toiling away for them. And eventually she's at this Ren fair to take a deposition from someone and they just keep calling her about it. She snaps and just kind of quits in this moment of realization that she's never going to get what she wants from this job. So she calls Mitch and she he suggests basically that she go on the road with his friends, the Dueling Kilts, I think is the band name, who are this band we met in the second book that just go around the country to different Ren fairs. Basically, they're a touring band. And he's like, why don't you do, why don't you tour with them for a little while? He's like, they're going to be coming up my way soon. So you can just tour with them until you get here. You can stay with me. And then you can, you know, you just, you need to take a break and like take a step back and figure out what you want. She agrees that's a good idea. So this is really kind of her like figuring out what she wants from life and touring with the band over the summer. And and she is having a romance with the main singer who we met in the second book and is kind of a notorious Lothario on the Ren Faire circuit. And yeah, like I said, I like this book. I would give it three and a half stars. It's a good book. It just, I don't know. The, I just need to, I guess, stop expecting it to be what I would think of as reading like a romance, even though it does have an HEA and it is a major plot element. It just reads more like women's fiction, I think. Then uh, the other arc I thought I'd mention was The Family Game, yeah, by Katherine Stedman. This was a really interesting thriller in that it is very slow burn. <laughs> so I was, I don't know if this quite met my expectations. Now I gave it a four star, maybe I should bump it down to a three and a half because it hasn't really stuck with me as much as I thought it might. But I think that this was a really fun book 
but I think I would like it better in movie form, which apparently the premise of it is exactly like Ready or Not, which is a movie I have not seen, but I clearly should because I really like the idea of this, which is basically there's this super rich family. Our point of view character is marrying into the family. She's kind of finding out their secrets. Uh, things that have come up in the past, things that her new fiance has tried to keep from her and that she is sort of discovering and it gets very deadly. I think it's a very slow burn and it's very heavy on family dynamics, which I enjoyed. I think though I probably would have liked this to be just a little bit more of a straightforward action adventure thriller. I think I probably would have loved it if that had been more the pacing, but that's just not quite what the book is doing and that's fair enough. I do think this is really entertaining. I could see this being, you know, like if you have a difficult relationship with your family and you're going home for the holidays this year, I could see this being kind of a cathartic read for that. So I think it comes out in, I want to say November. So maybe look for it in November and, uh, you know, take it with you when you go home for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. Uh, okay. Hastings is back on his tripod rubbing bullshit. So sorry if the camera moves. People have commented that I'm too nice to them about it, but I don't know. He wants to be near me. I think that's sweet. Okay, those were the only two I didn't have in physical form. The other ones I do that I finished, I can talk to you about these. So I read, I caught up with basically the, what is it called? The cycle, the Singing Hills Cycle by Nevo. So when the tiger comes down the mountain and then into the Riverlands, which is coming out later this year. I have given all novellas in this series four stars. I really love this series and I will say that with these two books, uh, Building from the Empress of Salt and Fortune, I'm really falling in love with Chi and just their I don't know. I, there's, they're such a sweet soul in some ways and they're a cleric, but they don't feel, I don't know. I just, I think their energy is kind of lovely and they're a cleric whose job it is, is to record stories. So I think that that just raises a lot of really kind of interesting themes and sort of metatextual elements around storytelling and memory and preserving stories and how stories get told, how they get transmitted. So I love all of that. We have Almost Brilliant who is their little bird question mark friend who's back and in into the Riverlands. If I had to say my favorite of the three, I would maybe say When the Tiger come, Came Down the Mountain is maybe my favorite of the three, but I will tell you this is probably my second favorite. So believe it or not, Empress of Salt and Fortune might be my least favorite of the three. But I think they're all good. This one is really slow burn. Basically it's she and Almost Brilliant encountering two martial artist sisters and an older couple who are traveling back to their village and they are all traveling together so that she can collect st a couple of stories that have been alluded to. And it's a slow burn to figure out what happens and kind of how all the stories tie in together. But I thought that this was lovely. So if you are a lover of this series, I think you will absolutely enjoy this new installment when it comes out, I think in October, yeah, October, 2022. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy this one. I've been, I'm glad that I'm caught up. I really like this world and I will definitely keep reading. She actually, you know, I'm thinking about this. I wonder, she is definitely not like Murderbot, but similarly to the Murderbot Diaries, novella series. What I'm reading for at this point is mostly Chi, like that's where I'm really connected. Um, so if you like sort of character driven and cool world driven stories, I think that this could be a fantasy novella series for you. But yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying them. I'm glad I'm caught up. And now I just have to wait for the next one, right? That's the sadness of catching up with these series is that then you're just stuck waiting for the next one to come out. I finally finished Switched on Pop by Nate Sloan and Charlie Harding. They have a podcast by the same name. And this was just about musicology, basically, in context of pop music. There were a couple of, I thought, really interesting uh, insights. There's a chapter about Oops, I Did It Again and talking about Britney Spears as having a brand in the early aughts that was explicitly anti-authenticity and how Oops, I Did It Again kind of reflects that. I thought that was a really interesting essay in particular, but yeah, several of them I thought were really good. And I always struggle. 
I feel like to actually understand what some of these musicology terms mean, truly internalize the difference between something like tone and timbre, I felt like I got closer with this. <laughs> so it is from Oxford University Press, so it's a little bit more academic in its approach. But yeah, I thought that this was really interesting, especially if you are really familiar with the songs that are being discussed. Uh, okay, The World Doesn't Require You by Ryan Almakar Scott. Uh, I just posted a whole vlog of me doing a reading experiment where I read five stories every day for two weeks. And this was included in that, so you can see my full thoughts there. Bottom line on this for me is definitely appreciate this, but didn't super connect with it personally. So I would recommend, but not like an all-time favorite or anything like that. Oh, and then I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I had a really good time with this, and this is what I would describe as really fun horror, which is a weird thing to say because of how gross horror often gets. Um, the theme or like the the big idea here is basically what if there was an Ikea-like store, an Ikea knockoff called Orsk that was built on a torturous prison from the 1800s and was haunted. And that's really what this is. Metaphorically, this is going for basically making a comparison to really big box retail work, just like how that is such a mind numbing kind of prison like environment for a lot of its workers. I thought that that was an interesting angle, a little on the nose for me in terms of a metaphor, but I thought that there were some interesting parallels drawn there. This is definitely, I think, worth getting in physical form just because of all the illustrations and stuff. I thought that was really fun. This is from Quirk Books, so they tend to do a good job with that kind of visually driven book. But this is really short, really fun. It's very cinematic. Like I could totally see this being a really good candidate to get adapted into like a Netflix movie kind of a thing. Um, it's not like the best horror story I've ever read, but it's really just I had a good time in it. It was very entertaining. So for me, this really worked. Okay, and then in terms of what I'm currently reading, I had started an audiobook and then switched to I'm Glad My Mom Died. So I am switching back to Origin, A Genetic History of the Americas by Jennifer Raff. This is basically a discussion about new findings about the timeline of the first peoples migrating into the Americas. So it's basically sort of the genetic archaeology of indigenous peoples of North and South America. I had heard the author talking about this on, who I think Chris Hayes' show, and it sounded really interesting, so I picked it up. I've also become much more interested in Native American history in the last year, of all reasons, because of my interest in Mormonism, <laughs> because the origin story of the Book of Mormon for Native Americans is like, I don't know another way to say this, but like pretty offensive. And, uh, yeah, it's just it but it, it's surfaced some things about like the beliefs of white American colonists in the 17 and 1800s in the Americas about things like the mounds that they would find that Native Americans had built. And it's just made I wasn't aware of some of the myth making around that. So I've gotten interested in that I've gotten interested in sort of like the like I said, sort of the genetic or DNA history of indigenous peoples in the Americas. So I guess that's like a side <laughs> product of my interest in Mormon Stories podcast is uh, getting interested in a couple of other nonfiction books related to Native Americans. So this is one of them. I'm not very far in. I think I'm like 10%, but so far it's interesting. I like a science book and this seems to be one that's pretty well done. Uh, let's see, what else am I technically in the middle of? Okay, I'm technically in the middle of life's work still. I haven't picked that back up since we last talked about this one, but I want to. And then The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics. I started this one back, oh gosh, in March of 2020, because this was what I was reading when I was in the hospital. That's right. But I, I think I'm gonna have to start over again. I got to like the 50, page 57 and I don't really remember much of what was going on. So I'm gonna need to start over again, but I technically have started reading this and this is on my TBR. I think those are the only things I'm actually technically in the middle of right now. I'm choking on my La Croix. This is not a good state of affairs. Ooh, okay. And now I look like I'm misty eyed talking about being in the middle of the Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanic. Okay, in terms of what I might read next, trying to recover here. So I have a couple of other arcs I'm hoping to read. So I have Shipwrecked by Olivia Dade. And this is the third book in her, gosh, what are we calling this series? I don't know if this series has a name, but it's 
the ones that the books that are related to the Gods of the Gates movie, miniseries, whatever that thing is. And apparently, like this guy from the description sounds like he's kind of based on Jason Momoa, but like even thicker. And I'm into that. Uh, and they had a one night fling back in the day. And then when they showed up on the on the set, they realized that they were going to be co stars. And they were like, this is a terrible idea. We should not be sleeping <laughs> with somebody I'm going to work with for however many years. Now the show's over. He's like, time to make my move again. So I'm excited to get to this. I love Olivia Dade's contemporaries. I sometimes have like nitpicks with them, but overall I just love her kind of sensibility. And so yeah, I'm excited for this. Okay, and then yeah, here's the other one that they sent me. A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. This one, they asked me if I was interested in it and I was like, I don't know, I've heard, I've heard a lot about Sierra Simone, so maybe. And I was into the tagline here, which is a steamy plus size holiday rom-com about an adult film star who is semi-accidentally cast as a lead in a family friendly, friendly Christmas movie and the former bad boy pop star she falls in love with. That just, I don't know, that sounded really interesting to me. I'm into an adult film star as our heroine. I think that sounds interesting. I think that the pop, boy pop band pop aspect sounds interesting. And it's Christmas, so we'll see. But yeah, this one sounded intriguing. This comes out, oh, this comes out in September. I didn't realize that this was so close. Yeah, okay, so this one comes out soon. But yeah, I was intrigued by the combination of elements of this one. I am going to read Blood Air by Alona Andrews because we are about to start season two of my podcast and we are going to, I'm going to read this for the first time and then we are going to be reading the Innkeeper Chronicles. So I, my goal is to record three episodes of that second season before I start posting them. So that means I need to start rereading Innkeeper and reading this for the first time. This is the spinoff to the Kate Daniel series starring her niece, not her niece, her adopted daughter, Julie. So I'm really excited to get into this. It's got really good reviews and it sounds like there's going to be more of these. So yeah, I decided to lump this in with my reread just to give myself like a little treat. I have a secret TBR going that I'm not gonna tell you anything more about, but hopefully I will start making progress on this this month. I would like to read at least one or two other arcs that come out in November. So that could be A Sliver of Darkness, which is a short story collection from CJ Tudor, Raven Unveiled by Grace Draven, which is the third in her high fantasy romance series. Oh, you know what? I'll probably read Tread of Angels by Rebecca Roanhorse. That is a novella and it's a fantasy steampunk western mystery kind of vibe. All the and then All the Blood We Share is the other arc I have. And the other arc I have for this year, which is serial killers, Western historical. I'll try to get to some of those. Uh, oh, and then I am try like I was mentioning, I'm trying to make some progress on whittling away at my pile of mass markets because I don't love having mass markets unless they're faves. <clears throat> so I'm trying to continue that process, which is why I'm currently reading Lady's Guide. And then the other one I grab that maybe I'll read is Beauty Tempts the Beast by Lorraine Heath. So we'll see. But yeah, I think that's plenty to be getting on with. And uh, that's, I think, what I'm reading, what I've read, and what I might read next. So yeah, let me know how your reading is going so far in August. And let me know what you thought about any of the books that I mentioned. If there's any of them that sound particularly interesting to you or you've read, let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!